What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Niners News here on 49ers Live. My name is Zach Hernandez. I'm joined by my co-host, Matt Llewellyn. Matt, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Zach. Let's go get that touchdown. Yes, sir. Today, guys, we're going to be talking about 49ers seventh round pick Juwan Jennings and what he has to do to stick and find a role in this offense. Matt, seventh round picks rarely make the team. Uh, looking back a couple of years, I think Adrian Colbert was kind of the last notable one to make it. What does Jennings have to do in order to make this team? Uh, I mean, he has to show out and step up when people are absent. You know, Debo is injured. Trent Taylor is still working his way back. Uh, we don't know what Jalen Hurd's going to offer, so the opportunity will be there. It's just a matter of him taking advantage of it. Um, you're talking about a guy who's 6'3", he's about 210 pounds, not especially fast. He ran a 4'7 at the Combine. Um, you know, had a good season last year for Tennessee, um, but for me, he kind of, you know, fits into that like big slot, you know, put him in the slot. Maybe he gets a, a matchup with a linebacker, somebody that he can take advantage of because he's not going to beat you deep. You're going to have to work him underneath or work him in the red zone where his height can kind of, you know, get him a little separation. Maybe he works on those fade routes or something like that. Um, but <laughs> that being said, it's going to be really hard for him to make the team. The wide receiver room is pretty full. Um, you have another rookie wide receiver coming in, Brandon Ayuk, who just, I mean, he's hes most likely going to start. If not right away, then, I mean, not more than a couple games in is he going to get a lot of those reps, especially with Debo out. Uh, it's going to be trial by fire for all the receivers in that room. So um, for him, it's just, it's hard because, you know, Jalen Hurd is the bigger, faster, stronger guy. Juwan Jennings is like Jalen Hurd light. Um and provided that herd can stay healthy, what, what do you do with Jennings? Like I said, maybe a big slot guy, maybe a red zone guy, but it's going to be really hard. And for me, I kind of see him making it back to the practice squad, probably best case scenario for him. Yeah. You know, I think the way the thing that you touched on there that I really agree with is Jalen Hurd. What happens with him? I think the only way I don't want to say the only way, but the, the, the biggest possibility he has to make this team is unfortunately if Jalen Hurd does not return healthy. If he's not able to play at a high level or play at all, then Jennings mm -hmm. has a pretty good shot at making the team, mainly because they're similar styles of play, and there might not be room for both of them. Uh, they're big guys who can play out of the slot, essentially a tight end-sized wide receiver, maybe not the fastest, but you know he, he, he can do a lot with the ball in his hands. And I just want to read this quote real quick from Kyle Shanahan when he was asked about uh, Jennings. He said, when you watch this tape, you know a lot of people in the league are going to love him. He was one of our most favorite guys to watch. He's a bulldog. He usually plays in the slot. I feel like he could probably play linebacker if he wants. He's willing to fight everybody out there. He fights for yards. He makes plays. And there's a mindset to that guy that you don't have to talk to him to hear about. So obviously the coaching staff values him. They value his style of play, which is kind of do anything and everything you can to get the yardage, to get the extra the foot, the extra touchdown whatever the case may be but mm -hmm. um Shanahan also did stress that the fact that he's a seventh round pick means he's gonna have to work just as hard yeah. just even harder I should say than any other pick to earn a roster spot um and you know like you said he's 6'3 215 uh he's he's a big big target and coming into the slot he could present a mismatch for defenses because he's bigger than you know relatively most corners and safeties and he's physical enough to kind of play through the physical play from linebackers so if the 49ers do see him, I think that makes sense because or excuse me, mm -hmm. do keep him, that would likely be why, because he can present a mismatch. But I think unfortunately it likely comes due to a guy like Jalen Hurd not being mm -hmm. up to par as far as where they want him. Do you think that's the only scenario in which they keep both of them is if Jalen Hurd isn't really ready? Yeah, pretty much. And, and you know, you hit the nail on the head that yeah, there are special packages you can bring him in for. But if Jalen Hurd is healthy. Jalen Hurd checks the box way more than Juwan Jennings does in those situations because Jalen Hurd is, is an outstanding athlete. Uh, and, and that's not to say Juwan Jennings is a terrible athlete, but, you know, he's he's below average, and, and that's part of the reason why he slipped. You know, one of those Shanahan quotes was also that he was surprised to see him fall into the seventh round. Mm -hmm. um, but if that was the case, I mean, you know, the Niners had other opportunities to go get him. And, you know, I mean, if you really think that – Juwan Jennings is your guy, then why do you get somebody like McKivitz before him if, mm -hmm. if that's your guy? And, you know, he's slotted about where he was supposed to go. 
maybe he could have been a sixth round guy, but you know, seventh round, that's not too far outside the realm of responsibility or a uh, possibility. I'm sure some people had him undrafted. So for me, it's just, if you're going to have a package for, you know, special, these special plays, it has to be to a dynamic player because the problem is when you have somebody like Jennings, who again, isn't going to beat you and burn you deep and not going to do, you know, a ton of things that Jalen Hurd can do. It just makes it easier for the defense to prepare. It's like when you have a specialist who's not really that special at something, when you put him in the game, the defense goes, oh, well, we know what this guy's going to do because we've seen this before. And it's not like even if we know what's coming, it's not like a Tyreek Hill who's like, oh, okay, well, you can't stop me anyway because I'm just so physically dominant and so much better as an athlete than you are that I'm going to do what I want anyway. You know, it's going to be a thing of where if you put him in the game and you know what's coming, you can take him away. And that above all else, he could be a dog. He could be you know, the hardest working guy in the room, but at some point talent does matter. And again, there's a reason why he went where he went. I mean, yeah, like you said, they were surprised that he lasted that long, but they also had the opportunity to take him earlier. If that was the case. Um, Now, let me ask you this, Matt, do you think that Mm -hmm. they, them, their selection of Jennings says anything about their confidence in Jalen Hurd to come back at fully healthy? No, they're, they're, I mean, again, other than physical size, they're completely different players. Uh, they're not, you know, I, Jalen Hurd is an athlete and he's Jalen Hurd's making the transition from, from running back to wide receiver. Um, it, it, again, that I think I've already heard reports that he's cleared to do physical, you know, activity on the field. He can do, you know, workouts and stuff like that. He's probably going to make it back. So for me, no, I don't, it's just, again, it's just at the seventh round, what are you really choosing between? You know what I mean? Um, it's, that's like saying, hey, we like Raheem Mostert and you know we like Tevin Coleman, but we're still going to bring in these undrafted guys. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the guys that are in the room already. It just means that you're hedging your bets. You're, you know, Maybe a guy goes down. You know, Maybe something else happens. And again, we've seen the injuries hit the wide receiver room already. Bringing in a guy like Jennings, when you don't really have anybody else on the board, that to me says we're picking BPA. We're t- picking the best player we think is on the board regardless of position, regardless of need. It's it's the last guy that we have. Maybe they looked around at the other players and were like, eh, we don't really like any of these guys, but we do like this guy. And we thought he may, may have gone earlier. We're, we'll just take him now. We know we have a crowded room and he might not make it. But without anywhere else to go, without the knowledge of who these other players are, this is probably our safest bet. You know, So it, it's really just about building depth and having that piece in there just in case. You know, Maybe give a guy a look because he could surprise you. You never know. But I don't think it's an indictment on Jalen Hurd or their confidence in him coming back this season. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I, I agree with you. I think at that point in the draft, you're kind of throwing darts in the dark and hoping that one sticks. And likely Jalen Hurd, they 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 knew the name. They liked who he was. Um, and they were kind of just hoping that that would work out. And if not, hey, you know, it's a seventh-round pick. You know, no harm, no foul if it doesn't work out. But if it does, they, they look like geniuses because – Seventh round picks rarely work out in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, unfortunately, guys, I just don't think that Jay, uh, excuse me, that a guy like Juwan Jennings will last. Uh, He might be a a practice squad guy, like Matt said. That's my guess. Yeah. This receiver room is crowded as it is. Um, We're talking Mm -hmm. about guys like Dante Pettis not making it. And he was a third round pick not too long ago. So, it's just, you know, it's it's tough. Exactly. And we constantly forget that they signed Travis Benjamin. Yep, Every yep. time we talk about wide receivers, I forget that Travis Benjamin is in there, and yep. and you're and Travis Benjamin is an athlete. So I mean, to me, it, again, it's just where where does this seventh round pick fit in with these with this group of athletes? I mean, and say all you want, even Dante Pettis. Dante Pettis is an athlete. That kid is fast. He's got great feet. He could run routes. It's just something with his head. But for Jawan Jennings, again, when you have all these athletes, these super, if they're on point, he's going to look slow standing next to them, and that doesn't bode well for him. No, it definitely doesn't. So uh, the cards might be, you know, on the table, right? It might be on the wall, but all that's left to do is go out and prove it. Um, who knows? Maybe Jennings completely blows it out of the water, blows out yeah. of the park, and he just, you know, blows us all away. And, you know, we obviously hope that he does. But right now, as things stand, it does not look like he's going to be uh, making the 49ers final roster just strictly due to a numbers game. Mm-hmm. Like Matt said, there's just too many bodies that are uh, – held in higher regard respectfully of course but that's going to do it for us today guys thanks for tuning in to another episode of niners news here on 49ers hive make sure you follow us on twitter our handles are below on the screen 
and make sure you like subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below do you think juan jennings will make the 49ers final roster thanks for tuning in go ahead and hit the bell for all your notifications we're bringing you 49ers news every day of the week thanks guys go niners